Hello and welcome to Features and Facts of WinCC Open Architecture. My name is Markus Weber, I'm Key Consultant and Senior Trainer, and today I'm going to show you something about our dashboard. Did you know that we can also do complex graphics in a dashboard, like for uh, difficult machinery? Let me show you how this is done. Let me introduce the WinCC Open Architecture Barbecue Grill Station. Here we have our complex machinery. Of course, there is not only the graphic, but there is also the data structure, what we have already prepared. Our data point type definition features a lot of data point elements from various types, Boolean, float, and so on. And those, of course, are used as signals and inputs for our graphic in the SVG widget. Now, we will need two things that our dashboard can show a uh, machinery like that. Of course, first we need the graphic and second, we need a definition file, what is actually a JSON file. In this JSON file, there is of course things like the name and which widget type we are using uh, and then also a uh, label, description and maybe a minimum size. And of course, most important, which graphic you plan to use. In this graphic, of course, there are certain IDs. So the SVG file can be, of course, any SVG graphic. There are no prerequisites for the SVG graphic itself. And uh, of course, you will have IDs in the graphic and those IDs we can then refer to in our uh, definition in the JSON file. So when I go back to the file here, we will find the station one flame and uh, here we will also have the definitions, first of all, um, of the in, uh, input signals. We have the flame on. Uh, this is the, uh, the state of the, of the data model, what we have seen before. And here we then also find the rules. And uh, the rules section we define uh, with a wizard in the dashboard, but that is the outcome already of that. And let me keep to this example, um, flame on one. And we can see the data point element, what we are using is state dot flame on one. It can have the value of one or zero, it's a Boolean signal. And we have now two rules. One rule, if the operator is one, we set the opacity of the station one flame, that is the ID from the SVG graphic to the value true. Uh, also, we change the color and uh, we set some other things to true. And uh, when the operator is false, then you can see, okay, opacity is uh, set back to false. That we see now in live demonstration here. So let me uh, switch on the gas first and then the different flames. We put some steaks on the grill and also some sausage and you can also see the throttles are rotating to the exact position where you set it. It is, of course, not only the opacity what you can use. You can use any things like um, the filling or the rotation or scaling of some objects. Well, easy, isn't it? Let me show you how you could change those rules during runtime. In edit mode, we can now find here of course, it's linked to the data point, And then we can find at the options, our rules. These are all our input signals. For example, flame one on. And there is the rule for the operator being true or the operator being false. And that is also the wizard how you would create those rules. That means uh, you can add multiple actions. Uh, of course, you can also add additional rules Boolean is just true or false. Huh? I only need the two uh, states defined, but uh, it can have a, a lot of actions, of course, and different things set to the uh, different properties. Then you get the, um, the, the JSON file prepared in the first place, and you are creating the rules with this wizard. Then have a look. There is, uh, of course, all the IDs showing up in our selector here. And then, of course, when you now select something, 
could be the case that it's not the correct language. Maybe this is a German machine manufacturer and uh, you would then need to guess a little bit what is the correct object. No worries, the thing will then highlight uh, whatever you have selected here. And then of course there is also the property um, what you can uh, choose. There are of course multiple properties available uh, and then of course the value. So every rule is changeable if you want. Um, and yes, uh, that is how easy you would uh, create um, some specific settings. Now, how difficult is now to have some more stations introduced to our dashboard? Let me show you the easy mechanic. We need some empty room on our uh, other dashboard here. We go to edit mode and then of course we have now multiple options. We could drag and drop the data point. We could drag and drop from our views from the plant model or we can also select the widget first. We will find all the things here and of course also our open architecture grill and uh, then set all the different attributes like the title and uh, other things to display. Of course, most important to link it to a certain data point. But again, here we have the chance to select from the plant model views like this or from the data point names directly. Then of course, all the data point elements are linked because that is the structure inside our definition. And then the rules are inherited from the JSON file. But of course I can, if I want, over parameterize that and maybe one have a different setting for this particular instance of our new barbecue grill station. Here we go. And that is how easy it is to introduce new uh, objects. And by the way, did you know that you can multiple screens also with the very same license? Have a look how easy that is. I have, for example, on the second screen, my alarm screen and on the first screen, some dashboard. And that is now working with the very same license. The magic behind that is this little config entry, use shared worker equals one. Uh, if you enable that, then you can use tapped browsing or uh, multiple screens with multiple dashboards and you only pay for one license. Isn't that a cool thing? So folks, that's all what I have for you today. Have fun with Vintage UA. See you next time.